Hey, how you doing? Mr. Bill here today, and today I have a question that comes from the Ableton Tech Support Center. So I figured if the Ableton Tech Support guys are asking me stuff, then I should probably make a video. Um, the question is basically, how do I resample every note of the synth here? And he's asking me this question because he saw me doing it on my Instagram story, and he was just curious as to how I, how I did it. Um, so I'll show you how I set that up now. Um, and just before uh, you comment um, on why I'm doing this, the premise is that you want to take every note from the synth so you want to resample every single note um as many notes as it will do some most euro rack stuff will only do five octaves but you know some synths will do like eight or ten octaves um and you want to basically resample every single note like c1 c sharp one d1 d sharp one etc and then you want to put all of those notes separately in a sampler and then that sampler can play back each note um cleanly without having to put in say a C1 and then when you play a C3 it's stretched it up by two octaves and created a bunch of aliasing and stuff like that. So we're trying to mitigate that by recording each note out of the synth. Um, and the way that I have, the way that that looks when this is running is uh, like this. So I'll hit record on this channel and then start playing these clips and we'll get something like this. So you can see what that's done is as it's playing, it's resampling each note separately, like so. And then what the end goal would be to do is to get a sampler like this, and then you want to um, take all of these clips right here. You wanna, oh, God damn it. Um, let me go put this over here. You wanna take these clips and drag them into the sampler. Um, let's delete all this mess. And then what we would do in the sampler is we would drag all of these ranges back in the key panel and then you want to make them uh, make each sample basically represent the note that it's uh, supposed to be so this started from C sharp so I'm just starting it from C sharp and then you want to reset all of these root notes so we move this down to C sharp we move this next one here down to whatever the next one is uh, D next one here is going to be D sharp next one here is going to be E, next one here will be F, and then, yeah, I'm not sure if there's a faster way to do this, there might be distribute ranges around root key, I, I, I don't know. Um, but basically, if you do like a large amount of these, um, like a whole range, you can just say distribute ranges equally, and then it's a bit faster. Uh, and then what that does is just takes however many are there and distributes them equally, which if you have 10 octaves and you distribute them equally, it will just put one on each spot. Um, uh, so each zone, equals each consecutive key in a chromatic scale basically so if we play this back um some weird filtering stuff going on here i'll turn that off okay so here's c sharp uh two so i'm just going up the notes on my keyboard and you can see instead of stretching that note it's actually playing back a new note every time so every time i click on one of these you can see this has become a multi sampler now and the, the idea is that it's just a bit cleaner. It's not stretching the note. If I just put one note in like a C2 or something and then I had a long range like that and then we just deleted um, all of these, basically it will start stretching it. And then as we get higher in the keys, it will start to sound a bit a bit worse than if we had have resampled it. So the point of doing this is basically for this reason, to make an instrument that makes a little bit more sense um, or sounds a bit better rather. It doesn't really make any more sense. Um, so the way that I did this is I used uh, this program called Loop MIDI and you can do this on a Mac without downloading, downloading a third-party program but on, a, uh, sorry, on, on PC you need to use this thing called Loop MIDI made by a guy called to Tobias er Erickson or something like that. I'll um, put the link in the description and pretty much what I want to do is I want to use this to send MIDI data out of live and then back into live. And you'd be like, well, why do you want to do that? Well, how do you think I was recording all of these things as, as this was running? Well, the way that I was doing it is I was sending MIDI out of these clips here. And these MIDIs were sending MIDI messages into these cells to, to tell them to record. So what I did is I made five octaves of MIDI notes. Um, and the way that I did that was pretty much just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. Uh, let's consolidate this and just make one octave. So I'll just grab all these notes and just move them up one at a time. So we're just making one octave worth of MIDI notes, uh, like so. And then just duplicate this and then sh uh, press Control-A to uh, highlight all these notes and then press Shift-Up-Arrow. 
and that will uh, basically just make it go up an extra octave. Shift is what makes it go the octave. If you just press the up arrow, it just goes up one semitone. And then if we highlight all of these clips and press Control J, then that becomes a single clip. And then what I did is I uh, went through and chopped all of these into single notes. And the way I did that was by clicking on the grid and then pressing Control E and then my right arrow like this. And then after I was done with that, I just cut all of these and then pasted them into this channel here. And then as you see here, I just have each consecutive chromatic MIDI note going up for a uh, entire five octaves. And the reason I only did five octaves is because Euro rack gear. Um, so this stuff here is pretty much um, only going to do five octaves, I believe. Uh, so anyway, then the next step <clears throat> is to set up a uh, loop MIDI. So what you want to do here is you want to create some ports. So you just press add port or if you don't want a port, you just delete the port. That's all you have to do. You just have to create two ports. Um, one of these ports is going to be used to send MIDI from live to this loop MIDI uh, application. And then the other one is going to be used to send MIDI from this application back into live. So what we want to do here is we want to go into the preferences and then you need to do some setups here with the MIDI ports. Um, and the difference between, uh, you want to you basically make the input remote and then the output track. And the reason why, if we go here and we read about the difference, uh, what this is from Ableton's website, by the way. So what the track does, um, the track switch on input uh, allows live to record and receive MIDI notes. So we don't need that on the input because we don't want to receive MIDI notes into live. We want to receive data. And the reason we want to do that, I'll show you what we're going to do here. We're going to um, start playing these clips here and we're going to turn MIDI map on. And then I'm just going to scroll through the cells as MIDI map is turned on. And that's going to create MIDI mappings for us based on these MIDI notes here. Uh, so I'll show you what I mean. So let's play this first note and then go into MIDI map mode and click here and then start clicking down. And you can see it's mapping these for us. So what it's doing is it's sending the note information out alive and then it's sending those MIDI notes back in. And then I'm telling it every time it receives one of those MIDI notes to trigger this cell. And at the moment, the cell has a stop button. So if I go back to not MIDI map mode and just play these, you'll see it's triggering these stop buttons. But if we put that on record, it just triggers a record button and every single time it will just record some stuff <coughs> which is great that's what we want um because we want to record each note of the synth and then this secondary channel here is just the same five octaves of notes and then we're just sending these out to the u midi and then the u midi on my synth is uh this little device to the l i don't know if you can see it's far to the far left and that's sending the pitch information out to an oscillator and then the oscillator's output is running to a to this main output and that output is coming back into Ableton. So uh, that's why when I trigger both of these, it sends both the pitch information and it sends the information to hit that cell to start recording and then we get this. So that's the, the basic idea of it. Uh, and then to further explain what's going on here in the preferences, what remote does, uh, remote takes basically um, MIDI, uh, it, it's like so you can map parameters basically. So if we read what they say on the website, it says activating remote for a MIDI input allows you to create mappings from a MIDI controller to parameters in live, which is what we want to do on the input. We want to make live think that there's a controller trying to map parameters here. And then we want to send the MIDI notes out. So we turn uh, for the output to send MIDI from live to loop MIDI. We want to have it on track. And that's going to send those MIDI notes out. And then send MIDI from live to loop MIDI. We want it on remote. And that's what's going to send uh, or that's what's going to allow us to take the ability to map things in live. So if we turn this off, it's still going to be sending the MIDI notes out. But watch what happens if I play these and then go to MIDI map mode. Well, actually, they're already mapped. Let me... um. Let me delete all of these mappings real quick. So if we start playing these, and then we, we try to map stuff in here, you can see it's not doing it anymore because we don't have remote turned on. And the, and the same will happen if we don't send the notes out. So we want to send the notes out and we want to allow the um, input to, uh, we want to allow the notes coming back in to, to map things as if it were a controller. So basically what you do, after that, uh, after you've done mapping all of these slots for, for however many octaves you want to do, 
and then uh, creating these same notes to be sent out to your synth is you just let it run and then you just let it record the five octaves or whatever and then you just drag it into a channel. So what I've done here is I've just uh, done this for all sorts. Oh, actually, and, and another thing to probably talk about is the follow actions too. So the, so the way that these clips are selecting themselves, so the way that this is like triggering the next clip and it knows to do that uh, is because of these things called follow actions. So these follow actions basically... Uh, like a set of instructions so you say after a certain amount of time that I define which is four bars do something else so what I'm going to say to do is trigger the next clip but if I said trigger the previous clip and then this clip here uh, said trigger the next clip then that's just going to keep triggering these two clips here that I'm going to make red so you can see the instructions are just telling it to bounce back and forth this one is saying after four bars trigger the next one and this one is saying after four bars, trigger the previous one. Uh, so what I've done is I've just highlighted all of these clips basically and just said after four bars, play the next clip. And then on this last one, I've just said after four bars, just stop. Uh, and at the moment, I'm running the session really fast at 990 BPM uh, just, just for the sake of the tutorial. But when I recorded these, I recorded them at 120 BPM and allowed them to run for four bars each, which is about eight seconds of each note. And then I would just let it run and it would take us about 10 minutes to, um, to record all the notes. And then that's, that's pretty much it. I would just come back after 10 minutes and it would be done. And then I would just start another one with a triangle waveform or a sine or a square or whatever. Um, so now the next move for me is to turn all these into samplers using that zone trick uh, that I showed you. And then I should have a software version almost of all of my ha hardware. Um, at least like, you know, you can have some nice subs and stuff like that. I, I much prefer to do my subs um, with modular. It just sounds really nice, I think. It might sound shitty on this video because of the bit reduction that I'm, rec uh, the sorry, because of the quality that I'm recording at. I think it's like 128 MP3 because I usually use OBS here for streaming. Um, but yeah, that's, that's the basic idea. So hopefully you learned some sort of information out of that. I don't know. It's, I think it's a pretty cool trick. Uh, if you want to do this on Mac, instead of using loop MIDI, you use IAC drivers and it's the same kind of premise. You just create a, a output and an input and then you just set it up in your preferences the same way. Uh, so yeah, anyway, hopefully you enjoyed that. And um, if you have any questions, just leave them in the comments below and look out for some, uh, some racks pretty soon that I'm going to be releasing with a bunch of modular recordings in them so you can have nice saw waves and nice subs and nice square waves. And oh, I love the sound of modular. Yeah, anyway, keep your eye out for it. And, um, go follow me on like Instagram and Facebook and Twitter and shit and you'll, you'll see when it comes out. So um, yeah, have a good day.